Hello everybody, North Texas Trapper here. Um, we're about to skin this little gray fox and it's been thawing out for about a day and a half. Right around a day I guess. And it was rock solid because it was in this freezer right here. But anyhow, I'm going to skin it out and uh, just talk about what I do while I do it. We'll get to it. First I'm going to give it a little brush just to make sure there's nothing in the hide these uh these gray fox they got it's really really pretty fur on them and we shot it in the lungs so there's a little bit of blood right here on the uh spot where that bullet entrance went but uh, nice little girl fox mm -hmm. everything seems good just doesn't seem like there's gonna be any Burrs or anything in it when I go to skin it. So the uh, one of the first things I do is I'll just turn this back right here and uh, open up the tail. I just slowly work it right here until I get access to the tra tail, and I'm basically making myself where I can get an opening and get underneath that skin. Because uh, then we're going to run down this hairline on the back of the leg right where it makes the transition for the color uh, on here from basically from gray to the orange but before I do that I'm gonna go ahead and ring around these legs on the top now what I'm doing right here it's not I'm not doing this for uh, speed I guess is what you're talking about we're gonna I'm trying to show you the slow way you know we're not trying to bust these out we're just trying to do it right because the better that you prepare the better you better off you'll be so I'm just gonna come around this leg right here we're not skinning out the feet today because we're not worried about anything taxidermy market or anything like that uh, I'm just gonna slide that knife on there and if you got like a pelting knife or something like that with a serrated edge it works good for this because messing with that hair can dull your knife so what I've done is just release the fur you know by taking one single swipe around it I don't want to cut into the meat because I'm going to be pulling down on this pretty hard in a minute uh, anyhow now that I got that I'm going to do the same thing to this other side and uh, I can get going on it just open it up real quick thing and we'll be ready to make this open and cut this initial one See, they're both free. Now, I got this side. I'm just going to run straight up that hairline until it opens. I'll get right up underneath the skin, not in the meat. And this is a pretty sharp knife here that I got. This uh, Paranta. Anyhow, just inside that. I'm just going to run straight up the thing. Sometimes this is easier on a table. You guys get the picture. You can open it however you want. Now once I get it open, I'm going to take a look here. and I don't want to cut into this hide, but I just want to cut the silvery part away. So I'm going to re release a little on all sides of this. Enough to get a hold. Because when I pull, I don't want to pull all this meat away from things. And I smell that. Smell just real good I love the smell of a fox now that I've got that open I can get a hold of these two tabs of skin that I got open and just pull down like I said I don't want to get that meat so we're going to kind of hold on to that meat and let it stay on there I'm just going to pull down real slow and release that hide from the meat Anyhow, so now we've got it down to the spot where we needed. it. 
and she's open on that side of the pelt. Got a little bit of meat in there. You can usually just grab a hold of this and uh, just pull it right off of there so it don't stick when you pull down to the portion of the guts. You, you definitely don't want to open up them guts when you're pulling on this because you will know it. It is the most god awful smell on some of these animals that you've ever got a hold of. Put my loop on my other side. Same thing. Let me get a hold of that hole that I initially made right here at the vent. And uh, don't I don't need any of this old butthole there. They don't pay extra money for that. So just gonna go up this leg. Should go pretty fast. Right on the back side of this leg muscles. Now we're opened up on top again. Like I said, just pull a little. Pull a little bit. Don't cut too hard. Don't get you a super pointy knife that'll make you get up in there and poke holes in your fur. Gotta be careful. They're not worth that much anyway right now, but they were at one time. Hey. Get a hold of this again. sure that meat's not coming with you. Got that broke loose. I'll just cut up underneath this vent right here. We don't need all that where he's going to the bathroom. She's going to the bathroom at. Now we got it broke loose. It's pretty easy from here. I open up this fox. We'll work a little magic on our tail. What you want to do is just once you get underneath that tail, you're going to have a little bit of that. Uh, a little bit of that basically tissue and I just want to go slow and work around the base of that tail I might even need to give a little straight cut just for a little bit just to free it up you're gonna free up just enough to get this thing down to the area where you're gonna be able to get your tail stripper around that they sell a few varieties at the different trap houses of the tail strippers and uh, this is the one that I've got. Got a few different sizes of the hole. I use the biggest hole in the center for now. But before I give that good tug on there, I'm gonna hook up this fox's other leg to this uh, gambrel, skinny gambrel here. All right, now that's on there. Got a little bit better support from up top. I'm gonna come in here and get a hold of that tail. I just put that around there, around that, put the holes around the tail. And I wanna, I like to get up here and brace it a little, or brace it along this, uh, by grabbing a hold of the back side of this tail so I don't pull it off. They are fragile animals, but I don't want to pull this off. So, one arm against it, you know, got this arm against it pushing away and this arm pulling. And, the tailbone will slide right out. One thing that's going to save you some time, you know, keep you from getting slapped in the face, is cut this off. Just cut that tailbone off. You don't need it for anything, and you're good. Now from here, it's just a lot of hand work. Not a whole lot of cutting involved. Like I said, the fox is fragile. So I'm pulling, and this hide's turned a little bit green because the, when we caught it, we let it sit for a little bit. And it was kind of warm. But it ain't ruined. It's just fine. Now we'll get down here. 
pulling down, pulling down. We're going to run into some issues if we don't take care of them right now. What we want to do is ring around this uh, ring around this leg, or just chop it off all together, but whatever order you want to take it in. What I'm going to do is just cut around it real quick and cut it off. You don't need too much legs. You're just going to tuck them into the hide uh, anyway. I, sometimes I'll take a beaver knife and uh, open it up because I don't have a serrated knife right now. And these beaver knives are pretty easy to sharpen back up. This is a Dexter one that I got. And then I just got the uh, tree, tree trimmers there. So now that we got that opened up, we can come on down to the head with it. We won't need to do anything. So all I'm going to do is just get low because this gambrel, it kind of hangs low itself. But keep pulling down. And once you get to the head part of it, not too hard but you might need a couple of relief cuts here to loosen up along the head now what's going to save you some time is uh, having a towel like this nobody's ever told you you could just wrap a dry towel or a piece of a dry towel around the hide and if you're using these gloves that makes it slick when you're using those gloves so you can just get a better grip pull on down. Now I'm going to go in here and get this leg and just pull the leg out. All I did was reach in here and grab a hold of it and you see that line. I'm trying to poke my finger through the line where that is. So right there there should be an open it'll open up like this and now you can just pull that leg on through let's do the same thing for the other leg we just pull it out try to get her thumb under it. it does require a little bit of hand strength I don't like using a knife right there but you can if you need it just make sure you don't cut your fur now We've got it all free. We've got both legs free from it. We're going to pull it down on the head some more. Another thing that towel is good for is managing that blood. All right. So now it's getting... What we'll do, I'll show you real quick, is as we pull, we're just going to do a little relief cutting by touching that white line ever so often. Most of it's still pulling, not cutting. So then again, I'm, I'm right here at the skin line. I can see where the fur is under. I'm just barely touching the knife while I'm holding force against it. We're going to bring it on down to where I can get over his head. There's a couple veins on the bottom side of that neck. I want to show you this. You see those veins? Especially if you got a fresh fox. You, you go cutting too deep and you open one of them up, you're going to know it. It's going to be fun. Everything's going to be bloody. Especially if you got a bigger critter that you're working with. It helps to have a place to hang your gambrel that is not going to give at the top. There is a... Uh, up at the top of this, this rope that I'm using, it's kind of stretchy too. If you could use a cable or something that didn't have give, it would work out better for you. So now, what we got going on is it's trying to go over the fattest portion of the head. See that? And it gets tough through there, so it's a lot more cutting, you know, just a little bit, I guess. So like gliding your knife over there, and then we're going to reach the ears, and I'll show you what to do with the ears. Now 
Now, you're at the ear, and you could tell because it gets a little squishy there. You can see the back side of the cartilage for the ear start to appear. All I'm going to do is try to find the base of that, and I'm going to cut directly in. Now that will allow them ears to come on down with me when I pull them out. And we'll go to the eyeballs next after that. those ears I'm still pulling still slowly cutting along that line and you can start to see that the edge of the skull you can follow that edge of the skull as it comes on down and you'll see the eyes start to appear you don't want to go crazy with your knife because you will cut those eyeball holes and they'll look all nasty and the fur buyer think you're a rookie skinner and uh, probably the way I'm looking right now. Anyhow, so you get here on the camera and his eye is right about there. And you can see that start to emerge, that eyelid. Okay, what I'm going to do is keep it flat against that head. Try not to get a lot of fur in there. I just want to release it and leave a little bit of that. I left a little bit of the eyelid on there, but that's no big deal. We'll get this other one real quick. Again, real close to the skull. You start to see too much of that uh, coming through. You know you cut it the wrong way. But this ain't a whole lot. They ain't going to worry about that. Anyhow, you see what's left on there. Not a whole lot. Now we're just going to come down the bridge of the nose. Pull a little bit more, cut a little bit more. Just relieving it from there. You can, you pull too hard, you will pull and leave his nose. You'll leave that nose on the carcass. And it's going to look all messed up. Probably going to get a downgrade. Most of it's pulling at this point. Pulling. Straight up. We're starting to see those front canines. Just real slow. You're easing along there. Just pulling that down and you're just working that knife back and forth over this part. Back and forth. Not too much into the nose because you don't want it to dull your knife. Anyhow. Once you get down low enough, you just cut it off there. You'll keep the nose on the hide a little bit, and then you got this bottom lip, and you can kind of just set your knife down and pull it off. We'll trim that off here lately, or here later. Now, let me get this out of the way real quick. We're done with that guy. Unless, of course, you want to do like I do and cut that head off. When you cut that head off, you can use it for stuff. Like if you're a skull cleaner, you just cut through the bottom